All right, gather round, chuckleheads. Today's tale is a laugh riot fueled by desperation, good looks, and a car that runs hotter than a politician caught in a lie. Please wait until the end for the punchline. We got Edwin, whose car is about as useful as a chocolate teapot in the Sahara, and a woman who looks like she could sell ice cubes to Eskimos, but with a secret that screams trouble louder than a karaoke night gone horribly wrong. Hold on to your sides, history buffs, because we're about to take a detour that's more exciting than a tax audit with a missing receipt. Forget stocks. 17th century Holland went bulb berserk. Tulip mania swept the nation, with fortunes blooming and withering faster than a fickle flower. Fancy tulip bulbs, especially rare varieties with vibrant stripes and unusual speckles, became the new gold. People traded houses for single blooms, and everyone, from cobblers to cheesemakers, dreamt of riches blooming overnight. Enter the con artists, the Rembrandts of Ruse. These smooth talkers spun fantastical tales of mythical tulips. The nightingale's lament, they'd claim, only bloomed under a full moon serenaded by a lovesick nightingale and could fetch you a castle and a lifetime supply of cheese. Spoiler alert, no such nightingales existed and cheese prices stayed firmly Gouda. Blinded by greed and visions of easy money, people gobbled up these stories. Contracts for future delivery of these mythical bulbs flew faster than pigeons at a spilled seed market. They were essentially buying tulip-shaped air, completely oblivious. The whole market was a house of cards, built on hot air and even hotter tulips. Eventually, someone, perhaps a particularly hungry nightingale, realized the emperor, or rather, the tulip market, had no clothes. Prices plummeted faster than a rogue wheel of cheese rolling downhill, and fortunes vanished overnight. The great Dutch tulip fiasco serves as a hilarious and slightly tragic reminder. Not everything shiny is a golden bulb. Don't believe smooth talkers, especially when they're selling flowers with suspiciously specific blooming requirements. After all, a bird in the hand or a wheel of cheese in the pantry is worth a field of imaginary tulips. Hold on to your sides, folks, because Buckle Up just ain't strong enough for this. We're about to launch ourselves into a con so audacious, so ridiculously brilliant, it'll have your funny bone begging for mercy. A man, let's call him Edwin, was driving through the Montana when his car sputtered like a politician caught in a lie detector test. Luckily, a farm loomed ahead like a mirage, and he swerved in desperate hope for some help. Pulling into the yard, he was greeted by a sight that would make a lesser man clutch his pearls. A scrawny man, as bare as a newborn baby on picture day, was busy hollowing out of a house with a look of intense concentration, like a squirrel frantically stockpiling nuts for the apocalypse climbed into a black soap pot. To add to the absurdity, the man seemed to be wife emerged from the house looking like a vision, enough to make a scarecrow question its sexuality. And just when you think things can't get any weirder, a beat-up backy pulls in, driven by a man who looked like he'd wrestled a herd of angry meerkats and lost. Edwin stammered out his car troubles to the uncle, hoping for a drop of water for his radiator that was hotter than his bank account after a weekend in Vegas. The uncle, bless his bewildered heart, offered a bucket with a wink and a... Sure thing, city slicker. Don't go spending it all in one place on fancy car coolant. During the water exchange, the conversation drifted, and the uncle, as curious as a goat with a lottery ticket, asked, So what brings you way out here anyway? The man puffed out his chest like a pigeon trying to impress a peacock. I, sir, am a con artist, top of the line. The farmer snorted, a sound suspiciously like a pig with hiccups. Con artist? That's just a fancy way of saying you nickel and dime folks for a living. Now real con artists? Those are the chaps in Weatherworld who promise 10 feet of rain in Montana with a sprinkle of magic dust. The man, determined to prove his point, grinned like a coyote who just outsmarted a rancher. Look here, uncle. See that black soap pot over there? I bet you five bucks I can make a whole man appear out of it with a little fire. Just light one under that bad boy and presto, instant friend. The uncle snorts laughter escaping like a donkey with hiccups. He builds the fire anyway, 
mostly because the idea of a magic man popping out of a soap pot is just too darn ridiculous to pass up. So there they stand, fire crackling, pot bubbling, when suddenly a bald dude leaps out and sprints off like a startled springbok. The uncle stares, jaw slack as a windsock in a hurricane. Finally, he scratches his head and mumbles, Well, I'll be a yellow-spotted dick-dick. If I didn't know better, I would have sworn that that man was our Reverend Nell. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here. <laughs>